Hey guys, what's up? This is going to be UFC 214 breakdown. Honestly, how fucking good was UFC 214? I thought it was absolutely amazing. The only dampener for me was the fact that I had to stay up till 6 o'clock in the morning to watch it. But I thought it was absolutely brilliant the whole way through. I started watching from the Andre Philly to, I'm not sure what his first name is, Qatar fight. Um, I had Philly picked before the fight started. I think it was, oh, Calvin Qatar. I think it was actually his debut as well. I thought he was absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. And after the fight as well, he said he wasn't fully kind of fit. I think there's a lot of big things come from him. A lot of big things. Calvin Qatar. He's definitely a guy to watch out for in the future. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so yeah, I thought that was a, a great fight. The next fight was Brian Ortega versus Renato Moicano. What a brawl. Brian Ortega, he's absolutely incredible on the ground, but for me, he he needs to, I know he likes to stand up and brawl, but like, to me, it's not, like, he needs to use his advantages more, you know? Like, I know he can be more free brawling because, you know, even if he gets taken down, he's like, I don't give a fuck, you're being subbed. Um... And I can't remember how I was scoring it, but I think it was fairly close. When they're standing up, they were just throwing bombs at each other. And when you have that kind of a fight, I think he's really negating his biggest his biggest advantages over his opponent, Brian Ortega. He got away with it this fight. He looked he looked good in the feet standing up and he did get an amazing, amazing submission finish in the last round. But I, it's just like with the judges as well, like you don't want to let it go to decision. I feel like he should have, if he's confident enough to press his opponents, Brian Ortega, if he's confident enough to press him, press him, take them down and finish it, you know, be effective, be efficient. To me, if he plays that game, these, these, these big bombs, you know, it's just he's going to get cut out, I think. He should play more to his strengths. It was an amazing fight, but I really think he should play more to his strengths. I mean, only criticism, but it was an amazing fight to watch. Yeah, so so that's my takeaway from that fight. I got fight at night as well. It was pretty fucking good. So then we have Ster Aljamain Sterling, Hen Henborough, Barrow, bro. I called this. Um, I did a prediction video, my last video, and it got a bit lengthy, so I cut I cut all the prelims out of it, and I just had the main card. But um, I was I was talking about this in my breakdown video before I moved it. Um, edit that bit. Out. I picked Aljamain Sterling to beat Henan Barrow and my reason for that was I think I'm just going to call him Henan because I think you pronounce the second name Barrow I'm not, I don't want to butcher it so I'm going to call him Henan I think that's how you pronounce his first name so Henan I think I think his best days are behind them um, I remember seeing his fights against Dillashaw and he was so outclassed it wasn't even funny it wasn't even the fact that he was outclassed it was the fact that he was so one dimensional there, there doesn't, there didn't seem to be any other strategy nearly to fight his opponent. It was all DJ was all these level changes, um, his takedown defense, his takedowns, if I can remember correctly, it was so brilliant. He completely demolished Hennen, absolutely demolished him. And then in the rematch, it was like, okay, he knows what's going on. How's he going to adapt to this? He was a champ for so long. He's fighting again to get his title back, and it was like, no. But in the first round, I think it was just like. Hennen's just not adapted. He's the exact same person. It's like, he's got one style, you figure it out, he's done. And I think that's exactly what happened this fight as well. He kind of started off, he, he he looked okay. But it just came to nothing. It came to absolutely nothing. Um, I have the stats up here in front of me as well. And significant strikes even. Hennen landed thir uh, 19, sorry, 19. 22%. Aljamain Sterling at 71 like that's a that's a phenomenal difference. I think Hennen's been fighting for just way too long. You know the wars have taken its toll, and look, who's to say the whole Usada thing didn't have an impact on him as well? I'm not saying he did, you know, but just throwing it out there. Maybe just age got the better of him. You know, the wars took their their toll, and now maybe his best years behind them. You know, that's what I think. I think yes, he's he's what thirty years old, but the amount of fights he has. Is insane, and the amount of wars he had is insane as well. And you know, maybe, maybe his best years behind them. I'll put it that way. So yeah, Aljamain Sterling, um, really, really good. Um, I'd love to see him fighting. 
you know, for the title or, or against against TJ. I think that would be an amazing fight. Amazing fight, yeah. So that would be a great one. And Mercado Lamas versus Jason Knight. I'm a fan of Jason Knight. He's a he's a good he's a good striker. He's really good on the ground. But um Lamas caught him. I think I think Knight was unlucky as well. Um he was ranked fifteen in his division. He was fighting Lamas, which um he was ranked three, I think it was. So this was a fight he took on short notice. He had the balls to jump in there with him. I feel like it was just a tiny bit too early in his career. Um I don't think there's any setbacks. I think we we know he's got incredible heart. But that's why he was kind of going on through that fight. I think he was clipped and how he didn't go down is fucking beyond me. Like I'm just seeing here, Lamas has 42 significant strikes. Knight only had 8. But I felt like a lot of them significant strikes is when he had him rocked. The guy just lit him up like a Christmas tree and he would not go down. It was it was fucking crazy. It was He's like too much heart for his own good. It was just, it was crazy to watch. How he didn't fall, like yeah respect to him but... Go back to the drawing board, and I, I would not write Jason Knight off. I think he's he's still a great fighter. He's a great prospect. He's young as fuck. He will be back definitely, definitely. Lamas, you know, does he does he go on and fight? You know, he's ranked three now. Well, see, the thing is, what Lamas, I can't remember who he's supposed to fight initially, but he was ranked three fighting at rank fifteen. He's basically fighting just for a few quid and maybe to get in Dana's good books for still for still taking the fight. But like apart from that, I don't think it changes much in the division for him. I think he kind of stays where he is, and you know, a rank three beating a rank fifteen fighter is like, you know, what do you do with that? The only person who could have really benefited from it was Jason Knight, really. Lamas was just keeping active, but the thing is, if Lamas loses, I guarantee he drops a few spots because he was beaten by you know a rank fifteen. So you know. I like to see him now get an opportunity, which I'm sure he will. Dana will kind of look after him for saying, "Look, look, you took the fight in short notice, you kept it alive." And to me, it was a great fight. I wish I'd have went on longer because the two guys were hardy as fuck. So it was a good fight, and I guarantee it's not the last we'll see of Jason Knight. Keep an eye on that kid as well. Yeah, and fair play to him taking a shot in for <laughs> the fight in short notice. <laughs> I said the shot. Um, yeah. So next up, we're into the main card now. Um, Jimmy Manua. Man, yeah, Manua versus Vulcan Ozdemir. This is where I started my breakdown video on the last one. And if you're interested, go back and, and look at it if, um, if, you, if you'd like. But I was talking about my only problem with Vulcan was he didn't have that many fights in the UFC. And I was kind of saying his last fight, I can't remember the guy's name now, he bet him. But it was a weird knockout that I couldn't, reg disregarding this fight, I couldn't really attribute to the knockout. I thought it was more of a, a freak accident. It's like the. the he came against the cage and, and Vulcan kind of just turned and punched him in the back of the head. And the guy was just out. And I was like, okay, it must be just like a freak accident. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I kind of felt like it was um, Musasi versus Uriah Hall all over again. Where he kind of kicked him, he knocked him down. But it was like, he played that fight te uh, ten times. I think nine times it goes to Musasi. And U Uriah kind of, I don't want to say got lucky, but, you know, he has some tools in his arsenal, but... In reality, Musashi should win that fight. He's standing up against Jimmy Manua and he's looked like a fucking wrecking ball his last couple of knockouts, his last couple of fights. Holy shit, he fucking murked um, Ovain Simpru, wasn't it? And I can't remember the last guy he was fighting. I can't remember his name now. I apologise. But it was a, he fucking starched him. So, I felt like it was going to be a long feeling out process. They were going to be very shy to pull the trigger and I felt like I wouldn't, I knew, I knew someone would be knocked out. 100% but that's kind of a given with these huge huge men you know the power that he possessed someone was going to be knocked out so it was kind of it was kind of similar in, in a sense to uh, Ozdemir's uh, last fight they came into the clinch come against the cage and I honestly felt like Jimmy was way too relaxed coming into this fight I don't know if he took Ozdemir too lightly but he paid the price big time I felt like he didn't take him seriously nearly they were in the clinch and I think Jimmy had uh, Ozdemir's back against the cage. Ozdemir got a tiny bit of space. I felt like this was Jimmy just not taking him seriously. Tiny bit of space and he come over the top with uh, a hook and Jimmy's head just dropped. Like I think he was so... He was rocked. Um, I think Jimmy kind of kind of fell back a little bit then and then Vulcan threw, uh, threw another hook I think missed and the next one uh, got him down and that was it. 
he just needed to be I think a fucking feather could have knocked Jimmy over after that he was done basically and he got another one but it was incredible it was incredible what do you, what do, you do with Ozdemir now like it's he's, he's got what three fights in the UFC he's got three fights in the UFC I think it's three fights three spectacular knockouts and it's like now all of a sudden I think Manny was like he was I think he was top five so like what the fuck do you do with him like does he go for a title shot um, I'm thinking he's to fight you either give Gustafsson the title shot I'll get on to that later on but I think you either give Gustafsson the title shot or else Ozdemir fights Gustafsson maybe and then the winner of that fights Jones maybe but uh, it's like maybe he has to fight again you can't just let him walk through the division you know I think one more fight and then one more fight and then he can fight for the title I think I really want to see him fight prop, not uh, fight like a longer fight. To see what he's all about, though, because against top level, you know, just to see what his skill set is, his heart, you know, everything else. We don't get to see much of him because he keeps fucking knocking people out in in crazy, crazy record time. Next was the big one. This was the fight I was looking forward to the most. This was Robbie Lawler versus Donald Cerrone. This to me was a really, really good fight. A really good fight. I thought it was a great return for Robbie. Donald showed up as usual. In my breakdown video previous, I was concerned about Cerrone's heart. I was concerned about, you know, not literally, but, you know, his, his spirit. That it seemed that when he fights top-level fighters, he kind of disappears. He shrinks when he fought the Sanios for the title. He just wasn't there. I felt like he gave up. So I thought against, I thought against um, Lawler, it was interesting to see how the fight was going to happen. Was Lawler going to start him? Was it going to be two guys coming at it? And I think that's really what it turned out to be. I think it was a great return for Robbie. I think Cerrone showed up. And it was a good brawl, you know? It was a really good brawl. Just looking, yeah. I'm just thinking there. I don't know if Cerrone got a takedown. Yeah, Cerrone got one takedown. And the fight was, I think, on the ground for just a small amount of time. But apart from that, the two guys had no real interest in taking the fight to the ground. It was all, you know, fucking hands and feet. Okay, so I'm going to get into the decision, okay? Um, Lawler won by decision. And a lot of people... A lot of people had it, you know, especially on Twitter, things like that, where I'd say Cerrone was robbed. Now, in my head, I had uh, Lawler won it. And I agree with the judges. I thought they meant unanimous. It was 30-27, but it was unanimous 29-28 um, to Lawler. And I've and I seen that. Lawler won the first half of the first round. He came out all fucking guns blazing. He was, the, he was the Robbie Lawler of all. He came out and he was just fucking, let's go. He touched gloves touch gloves and he was just gone you know he was fucking laying into the Cerrone and the Cerrone was lucky he didn't get knocked out and um, he started off really really fast caught Cerrone off guard and just went for it but Cerrone um, he kind of uh, got him in the clinch and Cerrone did really really well he survived and for the, the second half of the first round Cerrone came back into it but I thought Lawler just done enough to edge it so I give the first round to Lawler second round Cerrone hands down Um. Cerrone landed so many significant strikes. It was like Lawler took the second round off. People were kind of throwing it out there and arguing, could the second round have been a 10-8? And my opinion is, I don't think so. To me, a 10-8 is, if you can take your, your opponent down repeatedly, if you knock him down, you know, if you if you, if you you do everything but, you know, beat him in that round, what I mean is, you know, maybe you mount him, maybe, you know, he he's, like, he's nearly non-existent. Robbie Lawler was wasn't very existing now in the second round but I think it was just a, a normal 10-9 I think if, La, if Cerrone had knocked him down and maybe mounted him or or something really really significant like he lit him up he yeah, outpointed him but I don't think he done enough to get a 10-8 round um, then the third round uh, I gave it to Lawler I think he really he really went after Cerrone's midsection he he really slowed down Cerrone um, and he took the third round so yeah I gave it I gave it um yeah, yeah, so, uh, I agree I agree with the judges. I gave it two rounds to one to Lawler. So, what did he do now? What does Cerrone do now? Cerrone just gets, gets back on his bike, I think, and just keeps going. He just has to keep going, you know? Does he just start taking super fights now? Will he ever get to a title? Will he ever hold a title? Is he the most popular fighter in the UFC, you know, that will never hold a title? And it's hard to see now. Like, I'm pretty sure he's going to stay at 170. He's definitely performed a lot better at 170. 155, he looked a bit drained, looked a bit tired. I think the weight cut is starting to take its toll. 
And yeah, what do you what do you do with him now? Because he's starting to act like a gatekeeper. You know, will he always just be say fourth? You know, ranked. And any time he goes to move up, it's like no. But any time someone's trying to pass him out, you know, come from say six upwards, he's going to keep stopping them. You know, I just hope his legacy doesn't. I hope he gets a title shot again, and we can really see the Cerrone that we see when he fights kind of other people that are not top three. He seems to just have a different way about him. And maybe maybe his skills aren't good enough, but I don't believe that. I think maybe it's mentally, you know, even against uh, Nate Diaz. All in his head, you know. He, but, um, yeah, I, t- I give it to Lawler, yeah. So it's interesting to see what happens next. Lawler, what do you do? The biggest thing is, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll go on, I'll talk about the Woodley fight, and then I'll talk about what matchups can be made. Uh, Cyborg versus Avenger. I was very, very impressed with Avenger. Look, the skill difference is, is fucking... Is enormous, enormous. It's like, it's like the fucking Grand Canyon. It's just cyborg. You know, could she? Could she? Is there even a possibility that she could have lost that fight? In all honesty, and I think that I'm pressing you about cyborg. I thought she would have looked at Tanya and said, "Look, here's a last minute standing that I know is not on my level. I want to go out here and just swing for the fences recklessly and knock her out. You know, like a Ronda Rousey." That's what I thought. But the thing... Cheers, Seagulls. The thing that set it out differently to me was the fact that she came out straight away and it was like she looked pumped up, Cyborg, and she was slow. And she came over to Tanya and just picked every single one of her shots. She was so patient. To me, I was I was looking at that going, this woman is, is a straight-up killer, you know. And she was so patient and I loved that. She didn't come out and nearly was arrogant and assuming that was like, all I have to do is go out and swing... And I win this belt. You know, that's it. And she respected you on Tanya. And she was a hardy, hardy woman. She lasted... She done well enough, actually. Because Cyborg nearly was a bit too patient. But, you know, she got the job done in the third. Um, I don't think it was going to be any other way. I don't think there was any way Tanya could have won that fight. Like, I don't think she's got one-punch knockout power. I don't think, even if she got Cyborg to the ground... Cyborg's so much stronger than her few times Tanya tried to take her down like and she just shrugged her off like just pushed her aside like a child it was it's pretty incredible like the the skill gap and, and just it is incredible she has to be the most feared woman in MMA um, and in my opinion probably the best it has to be and who's going to fight her next Holly Holm I want to give my prediction now if Holly Holm if Holly Holm fights Cyborg Cyborg is going to knock her out in spectacular fashion I mean I think Cyborg is going to career ender. Cyborg is going to do worse to Holly Holm than Holly Holm did to Ronda Rousey. She's going to, she's going to massive fangle. That's a real word, by the way. She's going to massive fangle Holly Holm. I guarantee you that. Holly Holm is way, way, way too shy to pull the trigger. Way. She's going to stand back and try and do the leg kicks. Cyborg is going to walk her down, and I don't think, I don't think. Holly has the power to knock out Cyborg, not in one punch. I think Cyborg is just far superior to Holly Holm. Far superior. I think people, I honestly think people, the women's divisions are still growing. People might disagree with this, but I think the women's division is still growing and people are like, oh, well, she's fighting, you know, Betch Cohea and she knocked her out. I'm not trying to be bad, but in terms of UFC, the, the skill level, I don't rate Betch Cohea at all. If you're knocked out by Ronda Rousey, in my opinion, I don't think Ronda Rousey's stand up is very good, to put it lightly. I think it's I think it's pretty terrible, especially for UFC caliber. If you were getting knocked out by her, it shows you how bad you are. So yeah, when she fought Holly, I'm like, this fight's gonna be a fucking standoff and eventually something might happen. Eventually Holly knocked her out, but I think Holly's still overrated. She lost three in a row as well. She's to me Holly is like she's got the talent, but she just does she believe in herself? Is she afraid of getting knocked out? It's like holy fuck. Do something with it. Put yourself in, in situations because if Holly fights Cyborg, Cyborg's going to walk her down and, and does what she wants with her. She could, could take her down. She could just knock her out on the feet. You know, she's so strong. I don't think Holly stands a fucking chance. A chance. And she's so shy to pull the trigger for some reason. I don't understand it. Every single fight she's in, you know. But um, that's just my opinion. A cyborg is an absolute animal. I can't see, like, who's going to take the title from her? Who's going to fight her? That's even if Holly wants to fight her, you know. But if she does, Holly's going to get starched beyond belief. Uh, Tyron Woodley versus Damian Maya. 
this was a stinker of a fight. To me, it was a stinker because... Not because I'm not one of these MMA fans that, uh, you know, stand the bang, bro. You know, one of them kind of stand there and, and just throw fucking haymakers and, until someone falls down. I'm not like that. I'm so disappointed in Maya. I've been following him for a long time. I've watched his rise. I, I've been following all of his fights. He's probably one of my favourite fighters in the UFC. I love his style. There's someone being that good. You know, grappling and their level of skill is fucking phenomenal to me, but I was so disappointed in them. You know, like to offer literally nothing. He's a grappler. And in my opinion, his takedowns, takedown attempts are fucking pathetic. Now, Tyron Woodley's takedown defense was absolutely phenomenal. Okay. It was, it was really, really good. But Damian Maya didn't offer too much. You know, I just feel like uh, Dominic Cruz made a great point as well. He was saying, why the hell doesn't Maya even throw more kicks? You know, what's the worst that's going to happen? Woodley takes him down? Woodley takes him down. Damian Maya is in his own, you know, that's Damian Maya's world. The same thing with kind of, you know, you've got like um, Ortega. You've got an amazing, amazing advantage. Your ability, some people's abilities on the, on the feet, you know, striking. Some people's is wrestling. Some people, you know, is grappling jujitsu. Your fight should, you know, surround that. Like you, you learn to box as well and you learn to kick. Do work around your advantages. And like to me, Damien's just not. He's a bit too... In that fight, he came in just too one-dimensional. No leg kicks, nothing to... Very little punches, kind of poor takedowns. And Tyron was posed zero threat. His takedown defense was amazing, but... You know, I feel like Woodley could have finished that when he wanted it, really. People are booing Woodley, but the thing is, you know, he won the fight. He won the fight. He played a great strategy. People booed it because it looked boring. But the, the the thing at the end of the day is he can only fight what's put in front of him. Maybe he was a bit too standoffish. But he, he fought a perfect fight against one of, the, one of the best grapplers, if not the best, in the UFC. If Damian Maya, don't get me wrong, any stage during that fight, if Maya ever took Woodley down, I, I'm pretty sure the fight's over. Wait, there's more than two and a half... More than two minutes, two and a half, that fight's over. But the thing is, it couldn't get to that stage because he couldn't take him down. So Woodley, you know, was very, very conscious of that, gave him tons of respect. And to me, he fought the perfect fight against him. The only thing he just, I feel like he could have finished him anytime he wanted, you know. Lit him up on the feet, he was way too strong. And, you know, that's it, he took it. Uh, Maya, I think what the likes of Ratings will never get a title shot again. Um, and I pity him because I think he is a lot more to offer than that. He's such a talent. I think he's got so much more to offer than what he showed. Same with Woodley. We still didn't see what Woodley has. To me, he held back in both the Stephen Thompson fights. I don't really care what anybody says. And same with Stephen Thompson. You get to a title fight, you know. My my feeling on this, if I get to a title shot, you know, if I'm a fighter, I'm, I'm going out there on my shield. I'm not saying be stupid, but I'm saying... I'm putting my fucking, I'm, you know, you put everything into that. You don't leave anything to judges, you know what I mean? Fuck that shit. That if it comes to the stage, you know you're losing or whatever, you put you put it on them. And I feel like, I feel like Stephen Thompson could sit there and say, you know what, I could have done more. I was afraid to throw something in case something happened, I was taken down, whatever. I think both fighters did in both fights and that's why they were so poor. So, the, it, and now, now Woodley, after that performance, has lost out in a GSP fight. And I'm pretty sure GSP would have taken Woodley. You know, taken the fight. And it would have been an interesting fight from terms of, like, grappling standpoint. You know, what happens with the wrestling? You know, um, I think there was some stats out or something to say GSP's takedowns against all of his opponents. He took down all his opponents. I think, I think that's true. And what would happen against Woodley, you know? So it'll be very, very interesting. But we're not going to see that now. And I kind of wish we would. We're going to see, we're going to see Bisbing versus GSP, and I'm not too excited to see that kind. Of, it's still going to be exciting to see what happens, I suppose, with GSP. But I would have rather Woodley versus GSP. I think that would have been a lot better fight. Now, what the fuck do you do with Woodley? Who fights him next? I think it has to be. I think it has to be Lawler. It has to be Lawler. You know, I'll give you my reason behind it. If I'm Dana White right now, if I'm Dana White, and I've got Woodley, okay, the thing is at Woodley. He can't headline a card really anymore because who the fuck's going to pay for it? You know, who's going to buy it? 
Look at Woodley. The people were so bored watching him fight Damian Maya. They got their phones out. We're shouting boring and we'll just turn on the lights and just swing it. I've never seen that in the UFC before. I've heard fans shout boring and things like that. I've never seen fans do that like with their phones and it was just it was kind of hard to watch, you know, it really was. I, I was let down more by Damian Maya though than Woodley, to be honest with you. But here's my thinking. If I'm Dana White, the only person I can put in a fight against Woodley and have it exciting is the likes of Lawler. Lawler's after coming back after his knockout, avenging it. Now I think he can fight him. The thing is, it's a win-win, okay? You can build up Woodley to be a, a good fighter again. Get people, get, get Woodley back in people's good books. Because Lawler is going to stand there and just brawl. And I think Woodley will as well. It could be an amazing, amazing fight. And maybe Woodley won't sell the pay-per-view or the card by himself. If you put it on a fight night, if you put it on a UFC event. But, but Lawler will. That's the thing. Lawler will, you know. People want to see him fight. Lawler's a fucking animal, you know. He, you know, he comes there to knock people out. He was disgusted with himself. He couldn't knock Cerrone out. He, was, he thought that was a bad performance. And to me, the most logical thing to do, you have to. To get even some, some stock, some praise back in Tyron Woodley. To actually make him a seller again. Is to put him against Lawler. You have to. It's the only logical way. You know. To me you just have to you know. It's a good rematch. It, there's a different angle you can come on. It's trying to push your pay-per-view. That's what you have to do I think for that fight. So yeah. I'm hoping to see Woodley versus Lawler next. Um, that'd be a great fight. And I think. I, I, uh, I'd love to see Lawler win it again. I'd love to. I just love Lawler. I think he's absolutely amazing. He's incredible. He always comes out and puts on a, sh- a performance. And um, yeah. I think that's the fight to make next. Definitely. It's a win-win for both fighters. Lawler gets a title shot. Woodley. People want to see him again because they want to see Lawler. And, you know, Lawler's not going to try and take him down. If Woodley makes this fight boring as well, then yeah, I think the criticism is right. Now we're on to the main event. Daniel Cormier versus John Jones. To me, John Jones is the greatest fighter of all time. I think it's I think it's hard to even argue with that at this point. Like, he might be, whatever you think of him outside the cage or whatever, John Jones has to be if not the greatest of all time, of all time, of all weight classes. And I'm I'm including Mighty Mouse in that, but I just think his calibre of, his calibre of people he left in his wake is just ridiculous. Like, look at the people, go on to Share Dog or whatever, and look at his list of people he bet, the way he bet them. It's, it's pretty fucking phenomenal, to be honest with you. So, he bet Daniel Cormier again. He bet him, you know. Daniel was so convinced that he wasn't going to happen. He was going to come out there. He fixed all his problems. He, he fixed everything that, um, you know, could go wrong. And he was trained harder than John Jones and everything else. John Jones. Now, coming into this fight, my only problem with John, my only concern about him was ring rust. If the John that came out that fought over in St. Peru, this is the tweet I sent out as well. If the John that fought over in St. Peru comes out to find Daniel Cormier, Daniel will starch him. And I strongly believe that. But... If the John Jones of old comes out, he will annihilate Cormier. And that didn't happen either. What happened was, this new fucking hybrid of John Jones come out. To me, it was his best performance of his entire career. Of his entire career. This hybrid, it's a mixture of a fucking smart John Jones with just a maniac. You know what I mean? Back in the day when he was on coke and he had an excuse in case he lost. Except he wasn't putting in, you know, full effort. Now he's the John Jones of old putting in full effort. And to me against Daniel Cormier, he was fucking incredible. I looked at that fight and I'm like, I know there's a big build up around it, okay. But I urge anybody to go back and watch that fight. Try their best. Strip all of their attachment away from that fight. Strip all of the attachment away, okay. All of the emotion, all of the circumstances... And watch that fight for what it was. And then you will see how good John Johnson was in that fight. I think people were so... Every time, you know, Daniel Cormier might have thrown something or slightly clipped John. It was like, oh my God, you know, he, he's going to do something. Or John, there was so much... To me, when you watch that fight back for what it actually was, John decimated Cormier. Decimated him. I'm like... He, he, his, his height, his reach. He, he was so dynamic on the feet. And the funny thing was... It was it was a head kick that started up to finish. It was in 2014. I seen the video clip. 
Daniel Cormier and John Jones were talking on the same stage as Conor McGregor and Justin uh, Poirier. Dustin Poirier, I beg my pardon. And Daniel Cormier even comes out and says, I know what um, weaknesses you're talking about. You know, the left high kick, and he can get me in the head type thing. And he's kind of laughing, and Jones is like, oh shit, you know, he knows what I'm talking about. He's like, oh no, it's not that. It's interesting to see that, but I'm like, why the fuck didn't he fix it? If that's me, I'm like, if that's a genuine concern, you work every single day in sparring to make sure your head or whatever never comes up at that angle ever again. You fix everything. And to get knocked out by, by, by that exact kick he called three years ago, and to not fix it, I kind of... Makes me think about Daniel, you know. Maybe it was just hard word into him. It's just the thing that he does. But to me, if that's me, I'm 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 practicing even at night time. I'm not letting that happen to me. And to get knocked out in that exact fashion that set it all up was the head kick. I'm like, it's been foreshadowed. It's kind of disappointing to me that when I heard that. So I'm not looking too much into things. But that I'm just like, you just do everything in your power. If you're a champion, to not to, to negate every single one of your weaknesses, you always have weaknesses, you know. Perhaps to negate every single one of them as much as possible. Nothing that glaring that John figured out and just exploited. To me, the, the finish was fucking. The finish was incredible. The the head kick. Daniel was in fucking queer street. He started stumbling backwards. I think he hit the cage and he tried to move away from John. And John did this sneaky ass little trip. Daniel landed on his side and. He was he was more or less out of it then, and um, he hit a few punches, and the fucking elbows came from fucking Iraq, just boom, boom, and Cormier was fucking he was done. He tried to struggle maybe once or twice, and think about three elbows landed unnecessarily. Well, to me, okay, I'll finish what I'm trying to say. But three three elbows landed, and Cormier was fucking done. I mean. He was done, like, I think he takes three or four more elbows after that and he's in a fucking coma. He he was out of it, like, it was incredible. Um, It was vicious, it was hard to watch. Even though, and this is the other point I was trying to say about people were saying it was a late stoppage. I think in that instance, John McCarthy was very, very clever, you know, he, he used his brain and he took circumstance into the equation. John McCarthy, he took into account, you know, everything and he said you know I can't stop this early you know and he didn't stop a late either in my opinion he made sure Daniel Cormier had every single chance to recover every single chance and the second he went limp and he definitely couldn't defend himself and it was done John stepped straight in and stopped the fight and I'm like I don't see any anything wrong with that I really don't and I'm sure Daniel Cormier wouldn't see anything wrong with it either you know so it's just it is what it is to me, that's just the way it was. I, you know, I think every UFC fan around, their heart was just breaking for Daniel Cormier when he stood up, and it was just like I can only imagine what he's going through right now. After all the stuff Jones put him through, but Jones is just simply too good. Um, Cormier's body type, his, his height, his reach, it just let him down. You know, Jones, he was so active. He's got a foot. I think it's like six. I oh know. I think it's twelve inches reach advantage, and um, he's six foot five. Cormier is only five eleven. It was, it was too. It was just too much for Daniel. It's too much for him. It really is. He's just too good, John Jones. He's just too good. And people say he's born in the wrong era. That his main, um, his main rival is you know John Jones, and he's just always going to be second best. But if this wasn't the John Jones era, Cormier would be the best, definitely in the light heavyweight division. But in my opinion, still, you know, John Jones is is the greatest of all time, all time. So, what happens now? Uh, John Jones is maybe going to fight Brock Lesnar. Maybe. That's going to the freak show fight. That'll sell a shit ton of pay-per-views. But uh, the only problem is, I think you want... I think they were saying about Jones to fight in... I think there's a big event coming on in New York. So, they were kind of saying, you know, get the, the Jones-Lesnar fight then. Lesnar always sells massive, massive pay-per-views. Just because he's a pure freak. I don't think he's cleared because I think he was uh, suspended again, wasn't he? I think he was on juice again. So he's suspended for a year. He's not cleared yet, I don't think. So we can't we can't make that. So I'm wondering then, maybe Gustafsson, I think. I think for the likes of the division, for the, for the to keep the division healthy, I think Gustafsson. I'm going to make a separate podcast 
And it's going to make a small episode talking about Rumble Johnson and why the fuck he needs to stay away from the UFC. That's what I'm going to say. Um, and I'll explain why in the podcast. I have my reasons, trust me. So what does Jones do next? I think it's Gustafsson, you know. Gustafsson and then the winner maybe of, well, Ozdemir, yeah. You know, it's kind of, if you, if John fights Lesnar, it has to be Ozdemir versus versus um. Gustafsson, if John doesn't fight Lesnar, I think it's him versus Gustafsson, you know, round two type thing, and, you know, it's just the way Jones is, I can't, he's even better than him before, I honestly think this is the best before, this is the best John Jones I've ever seen, and I think if he fights Gustafsson now, he'll beat him, he will beat him, Um, but Gustafsson did come on as well, but if John Jones of all could beat Gustafsson, I think this John Jones will perform even better against him, if he stays on the right street. Maybe it was just, it's the only thing, maybe Daniel was the only one to push them to be like this, you know? You know, it's, maybe if Daniel's gone out of the picture, he relaxes again. You know, he starts being an arsehole again, you know? You just don't know these things, so. It's interesting to see, I thought it was an amazing event. A lot of good things going to come from it, you know? I'm making a breakdown video and a prediction video. Lesnar, you know, Lesnar versus Jones, Woodley versus Lawler, perhaps. Cyborg versus Holly Holm. Osmer versus fucking Gustafsson. These are all interesting fights. Interesting, interesting fights. And I, I just give a quick prediction. If John Jones fights Lesnar, I think John Jones starches him, you know? I think the thing with John Jones is he's actually still has a John Jones still has a height and reach advantage. It's a significant one, I think. I'm pretty sure on John on Lesnar. Uh, Lesnar has about 30, 40 pounds on him, yeah, of pure muscle. But the thing is, like, what's he going to do to John Jones? Like, yeah, he's big, but John Jones is really, really good on the ground as well, you know? Like, that's what I mean. If he takes him down, he's not just going to lie there and get hammer-fisted. John Jones is a nasty, nasty guy. I think John Jones will use more of his reach, use more elbows, more kicks. You know, the only thing even even fucking uh, Lesnar does against did against um, Mark Hunt was just dive at his feet. I, I know if he dives in against Jones, he's getting a fucking knee straight to the gob. And that's all she wrote. You know, John Jones is a different animal. You're talking about... You're talking about Lesnar. A freak with pure muscle. Okay? That has got a few wins in the UFC, yeah. But you're putting him up against the greatest of all time. I can't see Jones losing. That raw fucking talent. Think of how good Daniel Cormier is. And he... he he lasted three rounds, maybe. Lesnar will... Ah, will he last two? See, Lesnar's not a real fighter, in my opinion. Do you know what I mean? Lesnar's not a real fighter. Lesnar's like... Even look at the um, Alistair Overeem fight. He gets a few thumps in the stomach and he's done. You know, it's... he does. I don't think he has that in him. Not many people do. He, he's doing it for the paychecks and... he can. He knows he can dive at people, take them down and hold them there. But as a real fucking fighter, you know... I just can't see him beating John Jones. I think John Jones is like he's just so fucking talented. That's why it was so disappointing when he kept getting in trouble. But you know, I can't see Jones losing. So that was it. That was a two fourteen breakdown and review. Um, oh, well, I've done a bit longer than I expected, but I had a bit of fun doing that. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you got to this point, uh, thank you very much. Um, Leave a comment if you like. If you disagree with me, give your own opinions. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. I'm going to make a... The next video I'll probably make is a, a, a discussion on Rumble Johnson. Um, So he said that if he got enough money, he'll come back and fight John Jones. And I'll make a video on that. So take it easy. I'll see you guys then. Good luck. <laughs>